What's up, Restorers and Explorers? We're back with another episode of Tony Restorers and Explorers. Today, we are going to clean up another dry pond area. As we know, these downhill slopes and fencing always seems to collect the trash. And that's no good, we don't like that. I know it's been a minute since we uh, last seen each other. I've been taking a little hiatus here. I had a lot of work to do on the house. Uh, sadly, I won't be able to do any more furniture restorations in the house. Uh, we, we put laminate and um, trim and painted and redid our entire condo, basically. So that's kind of why I haven't been able to do as much uh, furniture restoration or cleanups as I normally would like to in this beautiful summer. But, you know, life happens. So I hope you all are having a great, great summer. Enjoying yourselves, getting getting used to this beautiful weather here. Um, it's crazy, it's already almost halfway over. Time flies. Time flies when you're having fun, huh? So yeah, sadly, uh, most of the furniture restorations that I'm gonna be doing in the future are gonna be done in my parents' garage. They have a nice little workshop and they're nice enough to have converted it into a furniture restoration factory. And it's just going to be a little bit more conducive and open. I did a big no-no while we were sawing the laminate. I uh, didn't cover my plants on my balcony as well as I should have. And, you know, dust and dirt uh, from the laminate got on there and some of the plants died and brutal. I uh, absolutely regret that. Should have just removed them completely. But it's another reason why I can't really do furniture, as you guys have seen on the other videos. A lot of my sanding is done on the balcony there, the condo, and um, the dust just gets everywhere. And uh, it's such a small space, it doesn't really allow, it limits the type of, uh, the type of furniture restorations I can complete, so. You know, all good. Moving on to bigger and better things. So crazy stuff in the news, huh? Everything's going on with the presidential election year. Everybody's hooting and hollering. You know, get out there and vote. Yeah, I think that uh, while voting may be important, it's much more important to. Uh, Take action and initiative in your own lives. Don't wait for the government to change something or, or a corporation to make a rule or whatnot. We need to self-motivate. And more importantly than actual voting, I've said it many times on this channel, is voting with your dollar. Vote with your dollar, folks. That's, that's the best way to do it because the only way this pollution and this waste is gonna stop is if we make it not profitable for corporations to use this material in their production of goods and services. So until we decide collectively that that's not a good idea and stop buying the products that use this stuff, they're going to keep doing it. It's just the nature of the beast. So, and again, whether you're on the right or the left, I don't think that it really matters. Everybody wants to live in a clean environment and can't really just chalk it up to your party to handle things for you. You kind of got to get out there and and make make your own path. Yeah, that's another thing people don't realize. I recently learned this too: is that receipts, the receipt paper that a lot of stuff is printed on in most states, they don't do it anymore. But see these little mag, the ink on here is just very, very bad. It's terrible. So we need to stop doing that um, and find new ways to print receipt paper and, and whatnot. God, yeah, when you really get close down to the, all the way down here, you see so much more, so much more junk to get. It's just so sad. That's okay. We're doing our part, getting better every day. Most importantly, guys, like I said, vote with the dollars. Don't support these companies doing questionable shit. 
Ugh. So as you guys know, sometimes we find some pretty cool stuff on these little adventures. Um, so far, nothing crazy here. All kinds of different wildlifes going on, some happenings. Remember guys, it's no plastic July. Use as little plastic as we possibly can. So I'd love to be able to get on the other side of this. Really put in some, some work. Plus it's just fun, it's just fun to be out here getting natural vitamin D. I can't get enough of it. Even though my summer's been super busy between work and updating our living space, we had to do it. We have two cats, as you guys know, and with carpeting, their hair and dander and dirt and dust all gets caught in there and it's not good breathable air. So we decided to switch. And we got big, big plans, not just for uh, my family, but for the channel. What I really, really, really wanna do is my main goal, as you guys know, within the cannabis industry, is not just use that sacred, sacred plant as medicine, but it is one of the best textile you can use for manufacturing, house building, anything, really. It's such a diverse plant and uh, me and Sarah are gonna build our house out of hempcrete. And I want you guys to come along the journey with me. I'm a part of a couple of different hempcrete groups as it becomes a more popular building material hill in the States. Um, more communities are growing up, adopting the techniques for building hempcrete structures. Now this is another thing that Europe is about 20 years in advance on us. Uh, despite their views on cannabis, hemp has been a legal product over there for a long time in producing paper, um, as well as this hempcrete material, which is basically just the stalks of a hemp plant. Um, inside has the hemp herd, which you mix with lime to create sort of a concrete material that is uh, a, car a carbon negative building material meaning it, uh, it's not gonna, it's gonna reduce your electricity bill by regulating warmth and humidity and moisture a lot better in our modern building materials, as well as it's mold and fungus resistant. And on top of that, it's, it's fire retardant, fire resistant. Fires uh, do not start on hempcrete structures, or if they start, they don't go very far and do a lot of damage because most of the structure is, a, is not flammable. It's a lime, concrete, hemp curd mix. So I was able to convince my wife that I think that's what we want to do for our home. And not this summer, but coming up next summer, you guys can tag along as I'm gonna vlog and, and document the whole process, all the way from pouring the foundation to uh, Building the walls, getting the electrical plumbing in through the hempcrete, and then floors and roof. And now, like I said, it's very new, especially in the States here, so I'm still learning a ton about the process. I've been, instead of a uh, producer of content on YouTube, I've been a naughty consumer, and I've just been devouring content on hempcrete and I hope to get in touch with a couple of contractors through the winter who can uh, help me achieve this lofty goal of hempcrete building I truly believe that it's uh, one of these things that it's gonna save the world um, and as more and more countries all over the planet recognize it's uses and versatility and as, as, a, as everything, as a medicine and 
so much more that in the next 20 years, we're gonna see a lot more cannabis talk. So, that being said, as a, uh, as a cannabis user, I, uh, there's a lot of legal markets out there now in many different states. And uh, I just want everybody to be wary of the cannabis you're consuming. If you can, like I always say, grow it yourself, whether it's a tomato or a beautiful white widow, old school genetics cannabis, female plant. Growing it yourself is always going to be safer, better and more rewarding than going to buy it at a store. And uh, what some of these companies are doing now in the cannabis industry with uh, irradiating their, their, their cannabis flowers so that they don't mold and they pass the, the testing. And that I don't think is a very natural way to consume an ancient medicine that has been documented for about 5,000 years. Um, you know, so if you are gonna, if you do have to buy legally from the criminals who imprisoned so many people over it. Make sure you're buying a, a good brand that's reputable and isn't producing mass, mass amounts for, strictly for profit and using the easiest production means to achieve that. That's not how I wanna do business. That's not how anybody should be doing business. But especially when it comes to uh, when it comes to people's a product that they're consuming and ingesting, or in cannabis's case, a lot of times if you're not eating it, you're smoking it, which isn't the greatest way to consume the medicine for health health-wise. But that being said, there's so many different means now through dry herb vaporizers and all those things where you can reduce the risks of oh, health damage while smoking cannabis. So we all know, you guys have heard me speak about this ad nauseum on this channel. Um, it's coming, the revolution's here, that green revolution is happening. And you can either get on board or get up off of it because we ain't playing games, y'all. We ain't doing it. I know I'm not. I wanna heal the planet. We are the stewards of it. We're doing a pretty shitty job of taking care of it. And I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. So take advantage of this summer. Get out here, help the cause. Do some detrashing, do some cleanups. Uh, the communities will thank you. It's kind of a thankless job, but something must be done. Ooh, there's a nice little slime mold fungus or something like that. We're gonna do uh, I was able to finish another book as well. We're gonna do a book review on the Patreon. Because it's not just uh, physical action. It's getting out here and, um, and reading, doing the, doing the intellectual side of the, of the work. Learning the science, learning the nitty gritty details of ecology and how to restore the environment. But the easiest thing that any of us can do again is like I said, vote with our dollar guys. Let's, uh, let's really watch what we're purchasing and ask for a little bit more out of uh, what, from these corporations that we all work for and they're supposedly be working for us, you know. Um, we, need to, we need to create a market where we make demands and the corporations and the government cater to our needs, not their own, lining their own pockets. It's, it's dangerous out there, guys. We're getting to dangerous levels of stupidity in the name of 
profit and growth, economic growth. Now, by no means do I say let's shut every thing down and start a communist revolution and do all kinds of crazy nonsense like that. But there are ways that we can get some accountability from these people. And we haven't been doing it. I think it's really important that we start. Man, these fences, they just accumulate all the junk. Some stuff, you just gotta get up in there with your hands. There's no way around it. Yeah, the single-use plastic Slim Jim stuff. What in the world? See, I myself am so guilty of contributing to some of this through my purchases, but I'm getting better about it. Getting more conscious. Really don't want to participate doing shit like that. Very, very important. So tell me a little bit about your summer, guys, in the comments. What are you guys doing for fun? Have you had any cool cleanups or little restoration wins? You know, have you tried to upgrade or update any old furniture instead of going and buying new stuff? Let me know. Let me know, celebrate the little wins, right? Those are little wins. Every piece of furniture restored and not in a landfill is a little win. Little, little victories. People, that's where it's at. Little victories. Just like these little blades of grass. Every piece of trash picked up is another spot where a little, a little victory of a, of a plant, a grassling or a seedling or mosses, molds, myceliums can grow. Little by little, guys. Uh-oh. Yikes. Minus one for the smokers. The dope smokers and tokers. We're supposed to be the health conscious, earth conscious people. Come on, guys. I haven't found a single can of alcohol, which is very, very rare, as you guys know. Enjoy. Yeah. All we need is a little bit of resource allocation, a little bit of bravery, a little bit of creative thinking and new ideas. And we can turn this ship right around. Plenty of civilizations have done it in the past. Many species do it for back then and today. Gotta adapt to survive. And if we don't, I think it's ripperoni in the long, long term. People don't really like to have a long, long game plan. I'm guilty of that too, but another minus one for the smokers. The Duchess. What's going on here, guys? Big fails. Big fails. Weed baggy that where the weed was probably rolled into the blunts. That's all right, we're making progress here. We're doing it, we're doing it. This fence line's gonna be clean. It's gonna be nice and clean. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Oh yeah, I can't stress it enough too, guys. If you can do this, if it's rained recently, you do not wanna be out here doing this. Everything gets wet and it becomes a nightmare to pick up, and even more of a nightmare uh, weight-wise as far as hauling to the, to the correct place for trash instead of just anywhere we want. Um, let, let the sun beat on it for a couple of days, dry it out. It's gonna make it easier to grab. Um, 
you don't want to be out here doing this and everything's soggy. I've done it many times and simply prefer not to. And sometimes after a good, good rain, that's gonna take days. That's gonna take days for it to really dry up. Plus it's a nice little workout. Great little cardio. If you like going to the gym and lifting and instead of getting on that treadmill or doing the cardio in there, come on out here, grab some trash. How about all these species that we coexist with? Got some healthy looking foliage. I'm not sure where you guys are at, but uh, weather hasn't been too bad here in Chicagoland. It's, uh, it's, getting, it's getting hotter as we come into August, but I predicted it to be a much hotter and a much drier summer. And it has been not, it has been really good. Nothing too crazy. Definitely makes for good pickup. Little pickup days. That's another time you don't want to be out here is when it's 9,000 degrees and you can't even breathe. You gotta bring tons of water. That's never fun either. All these beautiful little flowers and pretty little plants. A lot of people think weeds are ugly. It's not a matter of opinion. I think there's plenty of these weeds, despite their prickly and intimidating appearance that are quite nice. They're quite nice. All right, guys, we put a huge dent into this fence line here. I'm gonna keep going until my bag is 100% full, but it's been really good to, uh, to talk to you guys. Miss ya, and make sure we continue to live that green revolution, y'all. Talk to you soon, bye.